HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of HCAM News. I'm HCAM News Director Tom Nappy to fill you in with the latest happenings in Hopkinton. HCAM News is live every Thursday from 6.30 to 7 p.m. On today's edition of HCAM News, we have highlights from the first home games of the Hopkinton Hillers spring sports season. We'll let you know some of the upcoming happenings in Hopkinton and also let you know some information about this year's town election. But first, we recap this past Saturday's Hopkinton Annual Town Meeting. This year's Hopkinton Annual Town Meeting took place on Saturday, May 8th at the Hopkinton High School football fields. After Articles 1 through 5 passed, Article 6, the fiscal 2022 operating budget, which is over $101 million passed. So if we look at our actual enrollment numbers over time, and these are the slides I referred to earlier, 15 and 16, you can see that in 2019-20, the student population during the October Sims report was it 3,875? Today, our enrollment in the Hopkinton Public Schools is 4,021. Dr. Wagman's report indicates that at the end of the 21-22 school year, we should be at 4,024. I'm telling you, I believe that we will be there before September 1st, before school opens in 2021, we will hit that number. Right now, we have 328 students graduating from Hopkinton High School. We have 364 students who have enrolled to come into the Hopkinton Public Schools for the fall. These are people who have already gone into our student information system and completed the registration process. More coming in than going out. Some of the most highly debated articles were articles 35 and 36, both involving solar power. Article 35 ended up passing a standing vote 126 to 14. Five. All right, thank you, Mr. Moderator. And uh, again, Article 35, just to remind those people that might have missed the previous conversation, this would uh, require a site plan review for all commercial solar projects. It will ensure year round visual shielding for the life of the project. It will optimize wildlife and trail utilization. It will be pollinator friendly and it will add some additional requirements for developers to ensure compliance. Uh, including sightline analysis, glare analysis, noise analysis, full landscaping plan and bonding. So the planning board uh, moves that the town vote to amend the zoning bylaws uh, as set forth in Article 35 of the 2021 Annual Town Meeting Warrant. Article 36, which essentially specified locations solar panels can be installed, failed the two-third majority. Uh, but with 35 in place, that cr creates a lot more requirements for solar developers to do good solar, what I believe to be good solar. Uh, and as a professional in the solar development industry, uh, Article 36 clearly misses the mark. Article 36 will invite lawsuits. Uh, Article 36 is not widely supported by town council. It was a very pleasant way of saying it's a, that we have a different look at our view of Article 36 in general. Uh, Article 36 basically says you can develop solar inside, inside the median of 495. There is solar, to Mr. Weissmantle's point, along the Mass Pike. It is not in the median of the Mass Pike. It's in a couple of the interchanges, but it's not in the median. It's not in the median for a reason. You can't get the power out from the median to either side of the highway where the power is consumed or connected to the grid. You'd have to trench under 495, or you'd have to put wires up above 495 in order to move that power to a, a usable area, if you will. That is a crazy responsibility to put on a solar developer. That by the state, in my, in my view, my professional view, that would be viewed by the state as an unreasonable restriction on solar in the town of Hopkinton, and I think it would get shot down through the lawsuits that would likely come. 
So uh, for a lot of different reasons, I'll try to be brief here. Put this overlay district uh, is a bad bylaw for the town of Hopkinton, and I would strongly encourage town meeting voters, town meeting voters not to support it. Article 35 gives us a lot more protections, a lot of screening requirements. It's going to create good solar in Hopkinton. This is just going to create law, law, lawsuits and an awful lot of expense for the town. Thank you. Thank you. Article 37, which gave the town say into rubbish collection, featured some debate. The article was a citizen's petition not recommended by the select board nor the planning board. Um, I live in a condominium complex, and this has come up before a town meeting two or three times in the past, and it has been voted down. And I do believe that a number of other issues have come up because of it, and it is that most of these streets in garden apartments and condominium complexes are, are not accepted town streets. So uh, is there an insurance problem? Um, and then it goes on and it goes on, well, they don't get plowed. <laughs> they don't get their trash picked up. And it, and it has been um, voted down at least twice before. And I'm, I'm up uh, speaking against this article. The article failed a standing vote. To see all the results of this year's annual Hopkinton Town Meeting, head over to our website, hcam.tv. We recently hosted a debate for the lone contested race in this year's town election, which is school committee. Here's a look. What is the most important qualification for a school committee member? Give an example that shows you possess this quality and how it will impact your effectiveness on the board. Amanda, you can answer first. Thank you, uh, Tom, and thank you to HCAM for hosting this debate. Um, so the most effective, uh, the most important qualification, I would say, would be um, just being able to process a wide breadth of information, um, breadth and depth of information across many, many topics, um, and to digest that information quickly and to pull out um, the relevant, uh, you know, sort of actionable um, points so that you can make decisions and, and guide the district forward. Um, you can imagine in a job that deals uh, sort of overseas a $54 million budget covering facilities and hiring and curriculum and special ed and mental health. Um, there's a breadth of topics that you really need to become conversant on quickly. So um, I think it's important to be able to commit and do the work. I think um, that is something that I am actually, I like to do. I like to process information. Um, I, I like to do that analysis and I like to figure out um, sort of with a level head uh, where to go uh, with that information to, to help lead the district. All right, excellent. Uh, Meg, same question. What is the most important qualification for a school committee member? Give an example that shows you possess this quality and how it will impact your effectiveness on the board. Let me now answer, Meg. Thank you, Tom. Um, one quality that I think is absolutely crucial is the ability to listen and then to integrate into your own thinking, opposing points of view. Um, you know, the, the five of us have very strong personalities on the school committee, and we have to talk a a, a, about a lot of very sensitive topics and very important topics. Um, we don't always agree with each other, but I have learned so much from listening closely, especially to points of view that I don't agree with. Um, as you know, in the past year, we have struggled a lot with trying to decide what to do in the face of the pandemic. Um, a particularly trying experience, I think, for all of us was being on the reopening full-time committee and listening to people who were so eager to get their kids back into school and people who were really fearful of that prospect, too. And... I think that we all have strong emotions. Um, whether we illustrate that or not, we have them. And I think part of listening well is learning not to react to how you're feeling in that moment, but to be able to acknowledge the feeling in yourself, but still try to synthesize the information. And as Amanda said, to remain level-headed. A lot of this is about listening, 
waiting and then trying to do the right thing through the use of reason. All right, terrific. And Jared, uh, what is the most important qualification for a school committee member? Give an example that shows you possess this quality and how it will impact your effectiveness on the board. Excellent. Thank you, Tom, for the question. So, you know, similar to Amanda, I think the most important quality is kind of the ability to, you know, intake, you know, understand and ultimately synthesize information. The one point I'd add to that is ultimately being comfortable making a decision and moving forward. You know, I think that there's a lot of information out there, you know, certainly now, whether it's, you know, sourced in so many different places, but I think it's so important that not only just listening, not only gathering all of that data, but ultimately being able to move forward decisively. Uh, and I, I think, you know, as we, you know, as we look about, look what's most important, I would think that, you know, that kind of paralysis, just sitting, waiting, I, I think it, you know, it, it's difficult, you know, it's difficult for the town, it's difficult for the students. Uh, and ultimately, I think it's difficult for progress and moving forward. You know, I, you know, career-wise, I, I work uh, in the pharmaceutical industry, um, which, you know, is, is an area that, you know, is, is filled. It's, you know, we literally live and die by data. Uh, so it's, it's so important that, you know, your ability, you're able to make a decision uh, with something like 60, 80% of the data, make a decision, move on, continue to learn more. You know, if you learn that last 10, 10 to 20%, you learn a little bit more. It's okay to change direction. It's okay to, you know, correct, change course a little bit, but ultimately to make a decision and move forward. We are going to take a quick break. A whole lot more to come on this edition of HCAM News. Stick around. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Phipps Insurance Agency, representing companies such as MapFree Insurance. Their family-owned independent agency is deeply rooted in the communities they serve and offer time-tested insurance products to fit individual needs. Since 1950, Phipps Insurance specializes in home, auto, business, condo, and renter's insurance. You know, Dick and Rick Hoyt in the town of Hopkinton had a, a real and heartfelt connection uh, that started years and years ago, and it's uh, persisted right to this, this very moment. Um, and to have the sculpture uh, in front of Center School, which honors Team Hoyt, uh, is, is gonna be even more memorable now uh, with the passing of Dick. To me, besides the athletic accomplishments of Dick Hoyt, the most powerful example that they set forth is the, the strong and, and, and bonding relationship between a father and son. That's really what unconditional love is all about. Welcome back to HCAM News. Right now, check out some highlights from the first week of the Hopkinton Hillers spring sports season. It was action packed. Here's a look. This past Monday, Hillers baseball took on Medfield. Medfield struck first in the top of the first. Larry Sacklad had the call. He's gonna start out of the stretch. Here's a fly ball to center field. And that's over the head of the center fielder. That could be four. And it is. I heard Coach Simos warn the outfielders that the ball would skid. A one to nothing game heading to the bottom of the second, but the Hillers' bats got going. Mike Bernie. There's a base hit into right field. That run's coming to the plate, and he slides in safe. Score is tied. Cam Mulvaney. There's a little number over to Goodman, picks it up, and he throws it wide. He threw that ball wide, Mr. Pepperdine. A three to one Hiller's lead into the top of the third, Medfield responded. A 
again, Josh Fisher has a great move over to first base. And there it is. Oh, he had him picked off. Had him dead. There's a fly ball in the right, left field. Runner's going to tag Palmer. He scores easily. And it's 3-2. to two. A 3-2 to two game into the top of the fourth. And a nice pickoff happened. First getting a little extra. There it is. You're done. See you later. Go home. You got picked off. It remained a 3-2 to two Hillers lead until the sixth. There's a ground ball, and that's through in the right field. There's a ribby for Andrew gone. He's got a big grin on his face. I gotta believe. And it's four to two, Hopkinton. Four runs for Hopkinton, two for Medfield. That would be the last run of the game. Hillers baseball takes it four to two and improves to 2-0 and on the season. Hiller's softball also battled Medfield this past Monday. Scoreless game into the bottom of the first. Hunt deals. This is hit high in the air, right side, and caught. Runner from third is going to try to tag the throw in. Not in time. It's 1-0 Hiller's. Sacrifice RBI flyout for Harrigan. So run already in for the Hiller. CD gets a piece of this up the left side. Bobble by the third baseman and a run scores. So CD reaches on the error. D. Simone comes around to score. Kester up to third. It's 2 0 Hillers. A 2 0 Hillers lead. Hopkinton added more in the bottom of the second. Strike, runner taking off the third, and she's safe. And now the ball gets by, and she's going to try to score, and will. Make it a 3 to nothing lead for the Hillers. And this is hit in the air over to right field, and that's going to get down for a hit. That was nearly out of the ballpark. And Kristen McCluskey rounding second, heading to third, and she is safe. A triple for Kristen McCluskey. And this is hit high in the air, left side, and caught. McCluskey going to try to tag and score, and she will with ease. A sacrifice RBI flyout for D. Simone. It was a 5-3 Hiller's lead into the bottom of the fourth, and the Hopkinton bats absolutely exploded. Heels. And this is hit in the air past the reach of the shortstop. One run is in to score. McCluskey heads to third. And it's an RBI single. And now advancing to second is going to be Desmone. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Up the right side. Love by the first baseman. She steps on the bag, gets the out, but another run scores. A job well done by Harrigan. Gets the sacrifice RBI ground out. Set to deal. And this is up the left side. That'll get through. Kester around to score. And it's a 9-3 game. This is going to roll all the way back to the wall. The center fielder had trouble tracking it down. And Harrigan's going to try to score now. And she'll come around to score. CD to third. And the throw gets into left field. And CD is going to stay put at third. And this is ripped in the left field. That'll get down for a hit, and a run will score. And now continuing on to second is Morse, an RBI double. Set to deliver, and this is up the middle, past the reach of the second baseman, being waved around as Chevery. She'll come around to score, and now the runner behind her is going to come around to score. Jurasek also in to score. 
A two RBI double for McCluskey. Nine runs in the bottom of the fourth, and Hiller scored another run in the bottom of the fifth to put the mercy rule into effect. Hopkinton comes away with a 15-3 victory. Hiller's softball is now 2-0 on the season. Hiller's girls lacrosse took on Westwood, and Westwood went on a tear and took the game 19-2. Hiller's girls lacrosse had one win and two losses on the season, heading into their Thursday night road matchup with Medfield. This past Tuesday, Hopkinton boys and girls track and field took on Ashland. The Hopkinton boys swept six different events in their 99-37 win over Ashland. Tommy Bernardin won the long jump and high jump with PRs in both. And Aiden Morin took first place in shot put and discus for the Hillers. In the girls track and field match with Ashland, Kate Powers won shot put and discus. Haley Tolson won the long jump 100 meter and anchored the four by 100. Olivia Jones won the 800 meter. Autumn Tumbleton won the mile and set a new record. Bridget O'Connor also came up with a win. Grace Prucher and Ellie Driscoll finished tied in the 100 meter hurdle. Chloe Johnson won the javelin. Bethel Flanagan took second in the 800 meter. And Hopkinton came up with a 110 22 win over Ashland. Let's take a look at upcoming HCAM broadcasts of Hopkinton Hiller Sports. We have an absolutely loaded week. On Monday, May 17th, we have baseball and the softball game versus Dover Sherborne. Both games start at 4.15 p.m. And we also have boys lacrosse versus Holliston, which starts at 4 p.m. On Tuesday, May 18th, we have baseball and softball versus Ashland. Both games start at 3.45 p.m. And we'll have the wrestling match versus Bridgewater Raynham at 5 p.m. On Wednesday, May 19th, we have Boys Lacrosse versus Dover Sherborne at 7 p.m. And then on Thursday, May 20th, we have Baseball versus Bellingham at 3.45 p.m. And then, last but not least, Friday, May 21st, we have Softball versus Bellingham at 3.45 p.m. And Girls Lacrosse versus Dedham at 4 p.m. Of course, you can find all the upcoming HCAM Hiller Sports Broadcast at our website, hcam.tv. Upcoming events at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts include on May 22nd, Dystopia, the Hunger Maze Game of Divergent Death, an outdoor youth comedy. For all the upcoming events at the Hopkinton Center for the Arts, head over to hopartcenter.org. Our photo of the week Crews successfully repaired a gas leak in downtown Hopkinton this past Monday. Downtown Hopkinton was shut down for a little while while they did this. This photo is courtesy of the Hopkinton Police Department. Upcoming government meetings on HCAM TV, Monday, May 17th at 7 p.m. We'll have the planning board meeting. On Tuesday, May 18th at 6 p.m., we'll have the select board meeting. And then on Saturday, May 22nd at 8 p.m., we'll have the annual town election results show. Yours truly, as well as Mike Terosian, will be co-hosting that show together. We'll have Connor Deegan chime in with the results. That's Saturday, May 22nd at 8 p.m., the annual town election results show. Believe it or not, we are out of time for this edition of HCAM News, but don't worry. We'll be back next week, Thursday, 6.30 p.m. Be sure to tune in for everyone at HCAM. I'm Tom Nappy. Take care, and as always, thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day.
through winter. You made it through fall two. Well, you made it through fall one as well earlier on. And now we got the spring coming up. How's everything going? How'd the planning go? Are we ready to rock next week? Uh, well, we started. We're, we're underway right now. Um, so our first day of tryouts was uh, was Monday. So we have over 500 student athletes uh, participating, uh, which is awesome. If you think of, you know, just a year ago, right where we were a year ago. So uh, it's just great to have so many kids participating. Um, you know, there's obviously some unusual additions to the spring season with uh, for us wrestling and cheer. Um, being um, competed um, this particular season. Uh, we're still waiting on the modifications with wrestling, uh, but we have started our practices. Um, and then once we get those modifications, we'll be able to put together a full schedule and figure out what a meet's going to look like. And, you know, so some of those details we're still waiting on, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, no, things are going great. You know, I, I, you know, from everything I've seen, the kids are certainly excited. And I think there's a you know, sort of a special place for, that I think everybody has for the spring athletes um, in terms of what they lost last year. Um, it, when you really think about it, 50% of the students we have playing spring sports right now, we're in middle school. The last time we had a spring season, um, wow. you know, and your, your senior class was sophomores. You know, you, you don't really have returning players per se this year. Um, you know, so there's a lot of things that you don't really think about. Um, when you lose a season, um, there's, there's a real trickle down, um, impact, you know, in terms of tryouts, um, in terms of, you know, coaches haven't seen th these, uh, these students in a long time, uh, right. at least not in this capacity. And so, I mean, think of how much any player grows from their ninth grade year to the 11th grade year, the 10th grade to the 12th. I mean, that's a huge, huge difference. And, uh, you know, so I think that's a challenge that our coaches are dealing with right now and trying to evaluate during the trial process. But, but again, I think we'd all prefer this over, over what we had last year. So. Absolutely. The spring season, pretty much a full slate of games and we'll have playoffs as well. You'll have the uh, sectionals, you'll have the States. So it'll be a pretty normal season, obviously a little cramped uh, more than usual. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, despite the fact that uh, there's a lot of players we didn't see uh, last year, is all going well with the tryouts so far? Yeah, so far things have been great. Um, the coaches have been great. The, the student athletes have been great. Um, you know, we got some, you know, uh, inclement weather coming in, unfortunately. But but so far, the first few days have gone really, really well. Um, you know, and Tom, you mentioned this will be our first time out of the four seasons that we're going to play a full slate of games. And, and I say full. Right. We're still not playing 20 games because we don't have quite enough time to play 20, but we're doing the full TVL schedule for those of you that. So for those of you that may not know, it's we play everyone in the large twice and all of the crossovers. Uh, we've mostly just been staying within the large um, besides, you know, maybe some crossover games just to fill in the schedule when you lose an opponent due to quarantines and things like that. Um, and then in the fall, obviously, we just did pods totally based on geography. So this is really the first time we're kind of back to that sense of uh, a normal TVL schedule. Um, and we do have a couple non-leagues. Um, we're not opposed to playing non-leagues. It wasn't, it was more that we just didn't have any place to put them right. <laughs> in our schedule. Um, the MIAA only allows you to play three games a week unless you have to reschedule due to weather. Um, so we already had Monday, Wednesday, Friday, almost every week. Um, and so as a result, we really didn't have much room to, to add um, besides a couple things here and there. 